not even each other. And the twins were both with Philly, and Brent and Dwayne were with the Islanders. They were in the same division, and they played each other pretty regular. So it wasn't good. <laughs> and there was such a rivalry between the two teams. They were both good teams, and uh, it was tough, right? But uh, I just prayed for a tie. <laughs> the boys to get a goal. <laughs> Wouldn't get in a fight or something. The Sutters, they didn't care about uh, whether or not it was a brother. They, they just went out and played real tough hockey. And you know how you get into the arguments, you know, a heated hit in the corner, maybe a little bit harder than the other guy expected. Uh, there was definitely times where we thought that they were just going to actually, you know, maybe give a shot here or there. And that's just the way they were. They were very proud of the jersey that they wore. And I think that's the way they were brought up. Intensity, heart, absolutely 100% every night. They must have had some great fights as they were growing up as kids in Viking Alberta. Everybody used to ask what it was like to play against your brothers. They were the last people you wanted to lose to. And it was like that when we were growing up here. I guess that's maybe where our competitiveness came from. I can recall Richard and, and Dwayne having a scrap. Uh, and there was a type of guys, really, that they'd have a scrap and then both of them go to the penalty box crying because they were fighting their brothers, so it was very emotional for them. Well, the, the tough style of playing hockey, it, it comes down to caring and, and uh, hating to lose and, and again those traits were developed as, as youngsters growing up on a on a small farm and hell we couldn't even if somebody got to the walked out to the laneway to the bus in the morning before each other there was a scrap that he got there first so when the twins were six and Gary was whatever he was 16 we expected the twins to be as good as Gary when we played so they didn't do it they got kicked in the ass too you know like they it was play to win sort of deal. Comes out in front of that man, they score! Sutter! Intercepted by Dwayne Sutter, he scores! He scores! Brett Sutter! And the Blues take a 3-0 lead. Hey, I, I played 13 years and and I probably had to, probably played with in training camp at least 100 players that had jobs ahead of me and they didn't get those jobs because I wanted it more. Sutter, grind him tight, never quit, in the draws, in the corners, banging and smashing, blocking shots, and playing like a Sutter, that's the highest compliment. I mean, you can't get a higher compliment than that. Rough, tough, driving hockey. It's what the Sutters know best. They're the boys who loved hockey. Seven brothers, six in the NHL. Why did one brother follow a different path? Wilson Hockey Night in Canada. Sutter, the oldest brother. Gary had the same invitation as Brian to try out for the Red Deer Rustlers. It was a hard decision. I chose not to go, and but um, it was just a decision that I made. Come on, guy! Of the seven brothers, some say Gary was the most talented hockey player. Put the puck on the stick. Let's go. That time, hockey was almost like a dream. Then to me, I didn't think that we were, there was going to be so much success within the family. Come on, Dale, other end, let's go. I don't know if his decision was to stay on the farm was as much, I think he was in love at that time. Uh, and that he stayed at home because of that. I, I don't, I've never really talked to him about it. And, uh, but that's, I just, it was, he just never, got in the truck and put a suitcase in the back when, on that day that I did. Heads up, heads up. Those doubts will always be there. Could have I done it. Being the oldest, it was a harder decision to make. And I regretted it. And I still regretted it at times. I suppose I always will.
The Sutter brothers who made the journey into the NHL played hard and succeeded beyond anyone's expectations. But their devotion to the game begins to take its toll. It was hard to get used to the idea that hockey came first, the guys came first, you know, you... Unless if something tragic happened, I imagine he would have always been there. Yeah, it took a while to get used to it. It wasn't the fairy tale that I thought it was going to be. Rich and his wife Rhonda know the nature of professional hockey firsthand. In his 13-year career, he has traded seven times. You know, you just buy a house and you get traded, or you just, I mean, it always seemed to have a baby and you get traded, and, you know, so it seemed, well, especially Rich, he got <laughs> traded a lot. So we can be listening to trade deadlines on the radio, you know. Rich Sutter just, well, that's how I heard twice that he got traded, just sitting to, on the radio listening. So, oh, no, no, he's coming home, and yeah. I got to, you know, deal with all so. this. You have to spend as much time with your family. Um, you don't see your kids grow up as much as other people might. Um, I think that's probably the biggest drawback. A lot of people say, oh, you're so lucky, you know, you're married to a professional hockey player, and, um, you know, you, you must be very wealthy. But you really do pay a price for everything. 1988. In St. Louis, injuries forced Brian Sutter to call it quits. I'd just like to thank Dad and Mom and all you guys for coming. I know I, I couldn't have done it without all them and Judy and Abby and Sean the last few years, all the aggravation I gave them at home. But most of all, folks, I'd like to thank you. The only team Brian has ever played for, the St. Louis Blues, retires his sweater. At the age of 31, he moves from player to head coach of the Blues. Like everybody always thought I was demanding and expected too much, and, but it's interesting, the coaches that win all the time are like that. In his third season, he is named Coach of the Year. Injuries also forced Daryl Sutter to retire after nine years in the NHL. He stays with his beloved Blackhawks as a member of the coaching staff. His brother Dwayne comes to Chicago in a trade with the Islander. 1990. Troubled by the injuries that come with his tough style of play, Dwayne Sutter hangs up his Blackhawk sweater for good. That last game, it was, uh, it was, I, I guess, it was probably hit you hard because you knew there wasn't a hell of a lot you could do about it. The 92 playoffs, Chicago and St. Louis. The Blackhawks have a 3-2 lead in the best of seven semifinals. Seldom has a game meant so much to the Sutters. Darrell is assistant coach with the Blackhawks under head coach Mike Keenan. Rich and Ron are playing for St. Louis. Brent for Chicago. Across the ice, the career of coach Brian Sutter is on the line. And we knew that uh, there had been some discussions about uh, um, the likelihood of St. Louis letting Brian go if, if they didn't beat us in the playoffs. And, and uh, that was a very emotional experience. Hawks win! The Blackhawks have beaten the St. Louis Blues 2-1 to one tonight and four games to two in the series. And, uh... After the game... Uh, we, uh, we certainly walked onto the ice and, and uh, shook hands with their coaching staff, including Brian. And uh, when we got to the coach's office, not the locker room, uh, Daryl certainly was very emotional about it, broke down. After 16 years with the St. Louis Blues, Brian is fired as head coach. It was probably one of the harder times in our lives. Brian had been there for 16 years. And uh, you kind of go from being the golden boy to being, um, you know, you felt like you ran out of town at the end. Uh, you're a part of a team that was, and you built them overnight or helped build them overnight into a very good team. And the kids were born and raised there, and, and we we called it home. And, uh, you know, we still got a lot of good friends there, but that, that, was, that was certainly the toughest time. Uh, uh, as, as a coach that I've had. 1992. Daryl Sutter's coaching career is on the move when he is named head coach of 